On September 6th, I went camping in the Hatcher Pass again. I spent the night at Goldmint Campground. It was a very dark evening, and our only light was the flicker of the campfire. Suddenly the clouds began lifting, and I could see a beautiful glow coming from behind the mountain. As I sat at the campfire, Tim began filming the beautiful moonrise from the peak. The clouds dissipated and cleared the way for a clear and bright night. I could see everything around me. I was surrounded by mountains on all the sides, and a soft glow was cast upon them. I looked up and the stars began appearing out of nowhere. It was a warm 47 degrees and I needed two layers of clothing. I was camping in a camper, though I have camped in a tent in temperatures below 30 with no problem. A warm sleeping bag is all you need. By the morning it had dropped to the mid to low 30s in the lower elevations of Hatcher Pass. I waited for the sun to hit the trails before starting my hike. My destination the next day was the Gold Cord Lake Trail, so I drove up to Independence Mine and took another walk around the old mining facilities after paying the $5 day use fee. I usually see something new every time I go. Gold Cord Lake Trail is adjacent to the parking area of the mine, and I explored the Boomtown area surrounding the trail. I began passing some of the old now collapsed structures which made up Boomtown, a community of 22 families who all lived in small wooden homes close to the mine. There's not a lot left to see, but artifacts can still be found laying around in unexpected places. I saw numerous boulders with drilled holes from the ore samples taken. I was kicking myself later for not putting a small stone smiley face on one. We hiked up to the Lynch cabin, which was built around 1930, I'm assuming, by Roy Lynch, who was the mine foreman. He lived with his wife and daughter in the apartment house below at the mine, but the apartment house wasn't built until 37, so maybe he lived in this tiny little thing. It would have been quite the climb up here for a man with a wooden leg. The cabin is still standing due to the metal and wood construction. He bent the metal sheets around the house in a double wall. Its frame was a wood plank and log and he used sod sandwiched between this double wall for insulation. He even cut the metal and bent it around the windows to probably block wind and snow. The Lynch's daughter skied on this mountain while growing up here and went on to join the Olympic Alpine ski team. The kids in Boomtown went to territorial school at the mine complex. While we were hiking, we left behind a camera for some time lapse of the valley 3,500 feet below. The Gold Cord Lake Trail has an elevation gain of 800 feet and begins after a slight climb from the parking lot. Palmer sits below in the valley. Besides the Lynch Cabin, Boomtown, and obviously Gold Cord Lake, the trail has beautiful streams and small waterfalls as well as dramatic rocky slopes. You can see the waste rock piles above the mine complex from across this alpine valley. At the top of these waste rock piles were the mine tunnels where small train carts or aerial tram buckets carried ore down to the mill. I wonder if anyone could have spotted the rock glacier just above and to the right of the mine complex. A rock glacier is what it sounds like. A lot of boulders and debris from landslides or avalanches which covered lots of snowpack and ice. The rocks keep the ice below from melting and the mass even moves slowly down the mountain just as a regular glacier does. There are still old mine buildings on the tops of the ridges around the mine. The area here is groomed for skiing in the winter, so I'll be coming back as soon as the snow starts to fall. There are usually only little furries hanging around this area. The hoary marmot, arctic ground squirrel, pika, ptarmigan, and of course the common trail dog. That little guy followed me and my husband because he wanted to be part of our pack, his owner explained. He seemed to take this hike very seriously. Watch out for the crazy fox, though. They don't like it when you intrude upon their territory. They will chase you out of there, and I'm speaking from experience. The area here is fun to explore. It's not too challenging a climb. And there are plenty of alpine tundra plants here to observe. 
After five hours of hiking around, the sun started dipping behind the peaks and cold set in, so he called it quits for the day and headed back to the valley below.